everyone. Welcome to Anamika's Edu Space. Today, we are presenting the question and answers on the topic Our Environment, which is the first chapter of Class 6 Standard Science Book. All the students of Class 6 can relate to this video, but specially it is for the DAV school students. Now, before we start, you can see a link has popped up on the top right corner of your screen. You can also find the link down in the description box. Just click on the link to visit the video where I have already taught you this chapter. Now let's start. Subscribe and click the bell icon. And watch the full video and at the end also you can get a whole playlist of class 6 standard science book videos. So first question was answer the following questions in brief. That is in short we have to write down all the answers. Clear students? Now the question is why should we segregate different types of waste? And the answer I have written that is we should segregate different types of wastes because it is very important for us to separate the biodegradable and non-biodegradable waste to dispose them in an environment friendly way. Now let's move to the next question. Question number two. Write the meaning of the term vermicomposting. Now the answer goes as the process of forming compost with the help of various worms, usually red worms, white worms and the other earthworms is known as vermicomposting. Clear? So we already know that vermi compost, vermi word means only worm. So and composting means to decompose something, right? So when the composting is done with the help of the worms, that is the red worms, white worms and the earthworms, then it will be known as vermi composting. Clear? Next question. Now comes the question number three. Which component of air gets used up during the process of photosynthesis, right? Now, the component which gets used up is our carbon dioxide. We all know which is known as CO2. Now, in this way, we have to write the answer that is carbon dioxide gets used up during the process of photosynthesis. Is it clear, students? Let's move ahead. Coming to question number 4. Suggest any 5 activities that can help to save the environment. And the answer goes as we can save the environment by planting more trees. Number B is separating waste material before disposal. Number 3 is Rainwater harvesting. Number four is using vermicompost. And number five is controlling pollution. Now students, if you write the answer point wise, then you can get more marks. Coming to question number five. Question number five is, how does nature maintain a balance between the amounts of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now the answer goes as plants consume carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. We all know that during the process of photosynthesis plants need carbon dioxide plus they also need water, right? And in the presence of sunlight and the green pigment that is known as the chlorophyll, the plant prepare their food and the food is known as glucose that is, no, that is 
the actually the carbohydrate that plant needs and from this glucose the plants derive its energy and what it releases it releases oxygen in the air that is it releases o2 for us to breathe and that is only written in the answer that plant consumes carbon dioxide for photosynthesis and release oxygen back into the atmosphere this is how the nature maintain a balance that is plant takes the carbon dioxide where is it releases the oxygen if this is the tree then it takes the co2 in and gives out the o2 clear students then make a big smiley in the comment section and like this video now comes the big questions okay so number e point is answer the following questions now the first question is distinguish between distinguish means to differentiate to give the difference to difference between autotrophs and heterotrophs now what are autotrophs autotrophs are the green plants so i have written the green plants that prepare their own food glucose are called producers or autotrophs because they can prepare their own food by their own help next is the heterotrophs the animals who cannot prepare their own food and they have to depend on the plants for their food is known as heterotrophs or consumers right now the example of autotroph is plants and the example of heterotroph is cow goat etc students always remember to mention the example whenever you mention an example in the difference and then it always forms a plus point the teacher give, gives you more marks now coming to the next point is distinguish between decomposers and scavengers now what do you mean by decomposers there are some organisms which derive their food from dead and decaying plant and animal and they are known as decomposers where is what are scavengers scavengers are some animals and birds like the jackal the crow vulture kite who consume the dead bodies of the animal and they are known as the scavengers question state the differences between biodegradable and non biodegradable materials give one example of each now students please see in this question example has been asked but in the previous question the difference has been asked but no example was asked so it is very very compulsory that you always mention an example while you are writing the difference between two things let's come to the answer biodegradable material and non biodegradable material now what are biodegradable material the materials which can be broken down into simpler substances by the microorganisms now who are the microorganisms the microorganisms are the fungi and the bacteria right is known as biodegradable material and what are non biodegradable material the materials which cannot be broken down into simpler substances by the microorganisms is known as non biodegradable material now what is an example example is plastic plastic do not decompose into the soil right and plastic can only be recycled but not decomposed it cannot be decomposed but it can be recycled okay and what are biodegradable material paper vegetable peels fruit scraps all are the biodegradable materials clear students next question how does decomposition of dead animals turn out to be useful now the answer is in decomposition process 
the decomposers break down the dead and the decaying plants and the animals into minerals right here you can relate from this given picture and you have to also draw this given picture whenever the question is asked we now these minerals get mixed up with the soil and then they, again they are used up by the plants clear here you can see this is the soil the green the green plants of the producers are gaining all the nutrient from the soil and they are growing and once they are dead they are consumed by the decomposer and the decomposer of the microbes turn it into mineral and these minerals are present in the soil and again the minerals from the soil are used up by the green plants clear now next question so question number 4 is why is rain water harvesting a ray of hope overcoming the present scarcity of the water in the cities okay now the answer is rain water harvesting can supplement the requirement of the water in cities and raise the subsoil water level this can help in maintaining and increasing greenery in the urban areas this is how the rainwater harvesting is a ray of hope for overcoming the present scarcity of the water in the cities okay now what it has told that rainwater harvesting is a good way to consume and conserve water okay the rain water drains up and we don't consume it but if we consume it then it can increase the ground water level subsoil that is the ground water level okay it can also help to increase the agriculture that is the greenery agriculture in the urban areas what are the urban areas the cities and the towns are known as the urban areas okay now rain after harvesting rain water we can also overcome a situation where there will be no shortage of water scarcity means shortage clear students let's move ahead question number 5 why do buffaloes cool themselves in water during the summer right buffaloes cool themselves in water during summer because buffaloes are black in color right and they do not have efficient sweat glands hence they feel more heat and as they feel more heat they need to cool themselves by remaining always in the water so this is the last question in this question they have asked you to draw a diagram which shows the relationship between the biotic and the abiotic component biotic component means the living component okay and abiotic component means the non living component now what are the living component living component are the plants and the animals and non living component are water air sunlight right these are the non living component or the abiotic component now from the book you can refer this diagram and please do label this diagram by writing in interrelationships among different components of the environment draw this diagram neatly in your copy and also also you know exam to get good marks thank you students hope you like this video if you like this video then please do follow us on our fb page instagram telegram and also our youtube channel or follow the page the anamikas edu space please do share this video with all your friends and also do like this video thank you for your love and uh, thanks for watching bye each and everyone let's meet in the next video till then take care goodbye